We now want to consider the dwarf planets, the dwarf planets. And uh, there was a meeting in 2006 of professional astronomers uh, to discuss this issue of what is a planet. Uh, the year before, in 2005, an object larger than Pluto had been discovered out uh, in the outer regions of the solar system uh, beyond the orbit of Neptune. So th there, was, there was coming to be a problem and the astronomers knew there were going to be many of these objects uh, discovered. So, and what do we do? Do we keep adding to the list of planets or do we make a new category? And it was decided to make a new category. So we have a definition for a planet. It has to be round. It has to have enough gravity to uh, uh, keep objects from piling up just on one end or another, dumbbell type shape. Uh, has to have enough gravity that uh, gravity can pull down very tall objects and make us relatively round. Of course, you know, the Earth is a planet. It has mountains and valleys, but uh, it's not uh, rectangular shaped like a ruler or something. Uh, it is a uh, basically round object. Another requirement, it needs to orbit the Sun. So this excludes the Galilean satellites that orbit Jupiter. Uh, the object has to be on its own orbiting the Sun, not orbiting another planet. Uh, planet can't orbit a planet. So we have uh, orbiting the Sun as a requirement and it has to have cleared out debris from its orbit. This uh, really means it has to have significant mass and has uh, it's sort of the survivor of all the debris in its uh, orbit to uh, build up a, a significant mass while either absorbing other masses or deflecting them by its gravity uh, to different orbits. So it's, it's really cleared out uh, debris from its orbit. So around orbiting the Sun cleared the orbit of other objects. Pluto is round. Pluto orbits the Sun but Pluto has not cleared uh, its orbit of other objects. There are many Pluto-sized objects in the outer solar system. Um, so the old solar system, we had nine objects out through Pluto. This would be around 1930 when Pluto was discovered. And you can, you can already see Pluto's orbit is different than the other uh, planet orbits, more elliptical. You can't get the three-dimensional view here, but uh, you can see that. Well, here we are in year 2000 with uh, dwarf planets out in the Kuiper Belt. And we have a situation here where there are you know, eight planets and many, many dwarf planets. And it's very likely uh, astronomers are not done discovering uh, dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt. So this new category um, they fail to uh, clear out their orbits. They are round, they orbit the Sun, but they don't have enough mass to clear out their orbit space. Um, so that's the dwarf planet. Round, orbits the Sun, does not orbit another planet. It orbits the Sun and it's not cleared out its orbit. So Pluto has been imaged uh, by the Hubble Space Telescope and the late 1970s, you know, the Hubble telescope wasn't around, but the late 1970s, this moon Charon was discovered around Pluto. Its mass could then be calculated after astronomers uh, uh, calculated the size of the orbit and watched this uh, blob move around Pluto, measured how much, uh, how many days were required for uh, the planet, the, the moon, to complete an orbit around Pluto, and then the mass of Pluto could be calculated. Um, the Hubble telescope has attempted to see surface details, but uh, we're going to get a good view of Pluto in July of 2015. In July of 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft will fly by Pluto and give us our close-up look at this uh, object, at this dwarf planet. Uh, Pluto now has five moons, as I record this. Uh, that's my knowledge. I don't know if another little one might have been discovered, but... Um, Pluto is uh, accompanied by several objects uh, in orbit around Pluto. Just to give you a little scale of the size, Earth, uh, Mars, or Moon, and we have Ceres, a dwarf planet that orbits in the asteroid belt. 
of it's a rare object. Uh, most of the dwarf planets, almost all of them, are out in the Kuiper Belt beyond the orbit of Neptune. We have Pluto and its moon Charon, and here's Eris, discovered in 2005, bigger than Pluto, and uh, you know, leading to this meeting where the dwarf planet category was uh, was uh, given a stamp of approval. And here we get a little bit more three-dimensional view of the orbit of Pluto. And you can see it's tilted compared to the uh, ecliptic, the other uh, other plane, uh, planets orbiting a plane. So the New Horizons spacecraft launched in July of 2006 and traveled outward in the solar system, outward, 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 cruising until 2015 when it uh, will be uh, activated and tested. And it's been uh, activated a few times along the way here just to check out its systems, but arrives at Pluto and investigate Pluto and the, the moons of Pluto in July of 2015, and then keeps on going, and NASA hopes to uh, pass by other dwarf planets um, Kuiper Belt objects and explore those after passing by Pluto. So once the spacecraft reaches Pluto, it's not done. It's going to explore the Kuiper Belt, look for other uh, dwarf planets. Um, these dwarf planets, um, it sort of depends on what the, the uh, object is made of, how much rock or how much ice, but roughly um, about 400 kilometers is the diameter for a uh, an object that uh, will have enough gravity to become round, so it's it's about 240 miles in diameter. Those would be the uh, dwarf planet uh, status, and below that, then there'll be icy bodies or some other name that uh, micro planets. Um, just to coin a name, see if it catch on. But uh, about 400 kilometers in diameter, then we have enough gravity for the object to basically become round. Um, so the dwarf planets, they're round, they orbit the sun. They've not cleared out their orbit space from other objects. You should uh, keep reading, ask some questions, and uh, watch some more videos. So that's it for this video on dwarf planets.